Hey everyone, welcome to the first ever Q&A video on this channel. So thank you to everyone that has sent in some questions. We've actually ended up with quite a lot, so I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to fit all the questions into this video. So what we'll do is we'll start off with the ones which are the most popular and see how far we can get before it feels like the video is getting a bit too long. So let's get right into it. Question number one, which is the most popular question that we've had. How did you meet and how long have you been together? So we've been together for around six years now and we met in university. We both went to the University of Sheffield and while we were there we were both in a canoe club and that is where we met. Um, okay, there's a couple of questions about this. What is your dream piece of disability equipment and are you interested in using the rig slash not a wheelchair or any other similar inventions that will help you to have an active lifestyle? Personally, the dream piece of disability equipment would be something that can get me to as many places as possible. Um, and I don't think anything exists at the moment which can get you to everywhere. Um, so the closest thing we found at the moment is something like an electric off-road mountain bike, uh, something like the Bowhead or G-Trike or like the Not A Wheelchair, as you mentioned in the question. Um, this seems to be get you to as many places as possible, so definitely something I want to give a go. In terms of other disability equipment, I'm pretty much happy to give anything a go because you don't know how well it works until you try it. I love your Paralife hoodie. I'm curious, where did you buy it? Or did you make it yourself? I'd love to buy one. Um, so the answer is yes, we did. We have made these ourselves. A few of you have asked about that. And um, we will be making them available to buy soon, but not quite yet because we've been um, trying out different um, supplies and materials and stuff to make sure that we are only um, gonna have good quality um, items. Uh, but we do hope that it will be ready very soon, hopefully by the end of the year. So keep your eyes peeled if you are interested. We've had a few questions about uh, various types of pain. So some of them are, does Craig get neuropathic pain? Does he get chronic pain? Or do you get any pain around the metalwork in your spine? Uh, see, I'm quite lucky. Um, I don't really get any neuropathic pain, chronic pain, uh, or pain around the back of my spine. Um, I do get a little bit of muscle pain, joint pain from sitting in the wheelchair for a long time but none of that really horrible nerve pain. Yeah, I guess that's one of the few advantages of having a complete injury. Right, we've got loads of questions about um, hobbies and sports and things like that, so we'll pick out a few of those. Um, what are both of your favorite pastimes? Have your hobbies changed since the injury and have you got any new hobbies since being paralyzed? So our hobbies are very similar. We are interested in the same sort of things. So for both of us, we both really like travel. That's one of our um, favorite things to do of all. Um, we also really like outdoor sports and in particular water sports. Um, now before Craig was paralyzed, there's one water sport which we used to do a lot of all the time and that was a really big part of our lives and that is something called canoe polo. Now I imagine a lot of you have not heard of what canoe polo is so I'll put a couple of clips in now so that you can see but we used to do this pretty much every single week and we also used to do a lot of traveling around the country for competitions and stuff as well like once a month or so. But since Craig's accident, we have not played any canoe polo at all because of the nature of the sport. So with adapted kayaking, you generally have to put some outriggers on the side of the boat to help you balance. But um, with canoe polo, one of the aims of the game is to push people in. And that obviously wouldn't really happen with the outriggers. So having an ad adapted version of canoe polo is not really something that exists or necessarily could be possible. It wouldn't really go with the, with the game. Um, so that is unfortunately something that we can't do anymore and that we miss quite a lot. But on the broad sense, our interests are very much the same. We still like water sports and stuff as a whole. Are there any adaptive activities that you would like to try? And how do you find that disability sports compare to able-bodied sports? Um, so one that immediately springs to mind is skiing. This is something we really enjoyed doing before my accident. We used to go on ski holidays with our friends. Um, so it's definitely something that we want to get back into doing. Yes, definitely. And in terms of how do disability sports compare to able body sports, well there are a few big differences. The first one is disability sports are not very widely available. It's quite difficult to find a team or a club to play with. So this means you often have to buy your own equipment if you want to get into these sports. And the huge problem here is that disability equipment is ridiculously expensive it can easily be um, as much as 10 times the price of the equivalent able-bodied piece of equipment. So these two things really make quite a big barrier to disabled sports, which is really unfortunate. We've also found that disability sports clubs can be quite cliquey and a little bit discriminatory, which is a bit unfortunate and, and quite ironic. 
Um, <laughs> we think that anyone should be able to play disabled sports, uh, particularly if you're unable to play able body sports, uh, whether or not you use a wheelchair. Like maybe for competitions, you can you know narrow this down a bit and have people of similar disabilities playing against each other. But outside of competitions, I don't see any reason why everyone can't get involved. I personally like to play sports with my friends and family. Um, and while I can't really play able body sports with them, there's absolutely no reason why they can't play disabled sports with me. Mm -hmm. um, and having more people playing disabled sports means that they'll be more widely available and actually more disabled people will be able to get into them. So really it's a win-win for everyone. Mm. We definitely wish that disabled sports were more about like taking part, having fun and staying fit and healthy, but there seems to be a bit more of an emphasis on competition we found than typically there is in able-bodied sports. A couple of questions about travel. What is the favourite country you've travelled to? Where will you travel first after Covid? And where do you want to travel in the future? So favourite country is something that we actually put in a video that we released not very long ago. So if you're interested in that, go and have a look at that video. Um, I actually think it's one of the best videos that we've ever made on this channel, so definitely go watch that if you're interested in travel. But the answer to our favourite country so far is New Zealand. And uh, In terms of where we'd like to travel in the, fut the future, there were actually a load of places that we were supposed to be travelling to this year. We are actually going to be travelling all of this year, um, but we haven't been able to do that because of the pandemic. So the places we were supposed to go to were uh, the USA, Japan, China, South Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, um, Australia, and then again to New Zealand. So those are all places that we are very keen to go to once the world has opened up again and we're able to travel again. Um, but also probably what is going to be more likely to be the first place that we travel to um, after COVID is probably going to be somewhere within the UK because I'm guessing it's going to be more likely that we're going to be able to travel internally within our own countries before worldwide travel fully opens up. So um, in the UK, we would really like to take the van up to Scotland, um, travel around Scotland, and in particular do the North Coast 500 route. Right, there's a ton of questions about your new wheelchair, so we'll go through a couple of those. First of all, how does the new wheelchair compare to the old one? Uh, so, first impressions, it's generally quite a lot better. I'm not going to dwell on this in too much detail because we have a whole video which is all about the differences between this wheelchair and the old wheelchair, so you should definitely go and check that out. Right, another one is does the mono shock and frog legs suspensions work on things like cobblestones or just big things like steps and curbs? Uh, so the mono shock at the back and the frog legs at the front, they work quite differently to each other. In general, the mono shock works better on big things like steps and curbs and things like that. Whereas the mono shock, uh, not the mono shock, the frog legs at the front work better on smaller things such as cracks in pavement. Um, they help soften that a little bit and stop you falling out of your wheelchair. Next one, are the custom fabrications expensive? Well, that really depends on what fabrications you want. If you just want to add like a little loop or a ring to your chair, that's generally pretty cheap. But if you want something a bit bigger and more specialised, for example, like the Batek mount underneath my wheelchair, that ends up being a little bit more expensive. But if you're going to hands-on concepts for these fabrications, they'll quite happily talk them through with you. Next wheelchair question is, should you lubricate your axle pins? Um, well, that is something that we have done twice. When Craig first got the axle pins and when he got this new wheelchair, um, I have no idea what the sort of correct procedure is, but we do it because it makes it easier to put the wheels, take them on and off, like when you want to put your wheels in the car or whatever. Can you show the free wheel attachment in more detail? Yep. Yes, here it is. Okay, so this is it, the free wheel mount um, close up. So Craig's gonna show us how it comes on and off. So basically how it works is there's two pieces of tubing there connected together and they basically mimic the foot plate. It's the same spacing as it is on the foot plate. So it connects in the same way that it does connect to the foot plate. And there we are, that's how it hangs. Ta -da! How does Craig keep his bowels under control and do you ever have any accidents? So currently I use an anal irrigation system called the Peristeen. I've been using this pretty much since I left hospital and since I've been using this I've had almost no accidents at all. This is a topic we've covered in quite a lot of detail on this channel in other videos. So if you want more information check out the bowel routine video, the morning routine video and the rehab and recovery video. Mm, what else have we got? We've got a few questions about the YouTube channel. Uh, so we've got what made you decide to start a YouTube channel? Whose idea was it? Uh, do you film and edit your own videos all by yourself? And who answers your comments? Okay, so 
yes, first of all, we do do all of the filming and editing and all of that um, ourselves. And it was my idea to start the channel. And that is because when Craig first had his injury, we had absolutely no idea about like anything about spinal cord injury and what that meant for our lives and future prospects and everything. Um, so when Craig was in hospital at first, he was on a load of pain meds and everything, and he was really out of it. Um, so during this time, I spent a lot of time researching uh, about spinal cord injuries, and part of that I was looking on YouTube a lot. Um, and there's a lot of videos on YouTube from people with spinal cord injuries, but most of those videos are like from the person with the spinal cord injury for another person with the spinal cord injury, but not necessarily for the friends and family of people with spinal cord injuries. Um, but there was one channel I found, which is Roll With Cole and Charisma, who at the time of Craig's accident had only just started their YouTube channel, um, but now they're massive, so I'm sure most of you are completely aware of them. Um, but I really liked their channel because it was about them two as a couple, as opposed to just about Cole, and you know, they go and they show what they can do together, um, which was really nice to see, because that gave me some ideas of what we would be able to do in the future. Um, so we wanted to do something similar to that, but it's a little bit different because we live here in the UK and also because Craig is a paraplegic whereas Cole is a quadriplegic so there are some differences between what we can do and what they can do. Um, but having said that, in the first year of this YouTube channel we didn't really make videos about that, they kind of did accidentally end up being videos like from the person injured, Craig, for uh, other people who have a spinal cord injury um, as opposed to for friends and family as well which is what we wanted um, so we've realized that and we we weren't really very happy with where our channel was heading so what we've actually been doing this year is trying to go back to our original aims and trying to get back to making videos that are not just for the person injured but also for you guys who are friends and family as well um, so I'm now in a lot more of our videos this year than I was before and that is something that we're going to continue doing into the future so that hopefully our channel can be a much more welcoming place for anybody who is associated with people with spinal cord injuries and not just you guys who have the spinal cord injuries. Yeah. So in terms of comments, um, basically the answer is both of us. We both answer comments. It really depends who's doing it at the time. Um, sometimes it'll be just me doing it, sometimes it'll be just Claire doing it. Sometimes we'll sit down and do it together. Uh, we both have that full access to it and we will quite often answer comments who, uh, which are aimed at the other person. Mm. If we know the answer, it just makes sense to do that. So just because you send a comment to either myself or to Claire doesn't mean that will be the same person answering it. Yeah. How does your body feel below your level of injury? Can you feel your wheelchair? And does it feel like you're flying and floating, which is very interesting. Yeah, so this is a bit of a difficult question to answer. So I have a complete spinal cord injury. I cannot feel anything from about my chest downwards. So in terms of can I feel the wheelchair, generally no, I can sort of feel a little bit right at the top of the backrest, uh, but it's not very much at all. But having said that, I am kind of aware of where my body is or what my body's doing. Um, you know, if I shut my eyes now, I would be aware that I am sitting in a wheelchair. Likewise, if I was standing in a standing frame and shut my eyes, you know, I'm, I'm kind of aware of where I am, um, even though I can't feel it. So it's a bit, it's, it's difficult to explain. Having said that, um, I do remember quite early on after my injury, when I was in hospital, uh, at the beginning, sitting up for one of the first times, I do remember saying to Claire and my mum that I did feel a bit like a pair of floating shoulder blades. Yes, uh, I remember <laughs> this. Okay, I've got a good one here. Would you ever get an assistance dog? Short answer, yeah, definitely. Um, we, we're both quite fans of dogs. It's something we've been talking about for a little while. Mm -hmm. Whether it'd actually be an assistance dog or just a, a regular dog, I, I'm not entirely sure. We haven't made up our mind about that yet. But we definitely do want to get a dog. Um, and then speaking of pets, there's another pet question, which is, I have seen a cat in some of your videos. Is this your cat? <laughs> uh, yes, it is. Um, I'll see if we can find him and introduce him. Here he is. This is Sooty, and he's a bit of an old man now, I think he's about 14. He likes food and attention, don't you? This is Sooty's party trick. 
this is a question that we get um, a fair amount and we've also had requests to do a video about this but we we don't really feel like it is something that we can make a video about because we don't have a lot of experience um, in this topic so the question is did Craig experience any mental health issues after the accident? See I was quite lucky I, I can't really say I had any mental health issues at all after my accident which is why I don't really feel like I can give my perspective on the topic in a separate video. I mean obviously I still have days where I get quite down and a bit a bit sort of annoyed, frustrated and a bit sad about my injury and not being able to do stuff but those days are quite few and far between and in general I'm, I'm quite happy. Can you do an update video about the Batek? Yes we can, this is actually something that we've been planning for a while because um, it's getting up to a year now that we've had the Batek. Um, so we're going to be planning to do this very soon, so if there's anything that you would like to know about the Batek that you would like to be included in this video, then please let us know as soon as possible because we are planning to film this very very soon. How do your families treat you? Do they take you into situations that are unsuitable for a wheelchair user? Are they overbearing and overcautious? Well, I have to say both of our families are more on the overcautious, overbearing side. Um, they're definitely far more likely to try and put me off of doing something which they don't think I'll be able to do rather than bringing me into a situation which is unsuitable for me. Um, the only exception to that is actually Claire herself. Um, but this, this is actually a good thing though because Claire is very aware of what I'm capable of doing uh, and what we're capable of doing together, which is obviously more. Um, but she's also aware of when I need help and how to give help. Um, and also, you know, when when it's too much and we should give up. Um, so I quite like almost going into these situations. It's it's how we learn what we're capable of actually achieving um, by going into these situations, seeing how far we get, and yeah, giving up if not. Uh, in terms of the overbearing side, you know, all of my family members they they're, they're desperate to help me up. They don't want to you know, <laughs> see me struggle. Um, so they're always there sort of edging to help um, and it's only because I'm sort of I guess willing to tell them when they're doing this, telling them when it's too much that they have sort of learned and got a lot better at restraining themselves to offer this help so yes they're still a little bit overbearing but they're a lot better than they used to be. Does Craig do any physiotherapy? Nope, he doesn't do any anymore, he hasn't done any since he left rehab. Um, are you still interested in trying to walk again? It's not about being interested in being able to walk. I mean, if I could, if I could take a, a magic pill and you know my body could be back to how it was before my injury, and I could you know, move around freely like I did then, then absolutely, without hesitation, I would definitely do it. But realistically, for me, with a complete spinal cord injury, it's not going to happen. You see these news articles where you know paralyzed man walks again. Mm. Um, but what they don't tell you is, you know, these people generally are incomplete injuries. They often have, you know, some sort of flicker of movement, you know, it's straight after their spinal cord injury. And by working hard on this little bit they do have below their point of injury, they can often build up to the point where they can walk a bit. Um, and that's, you know, what these news stories are based on. But for someone like me who has a complete spinal cord injury, I have absolutely nothing below my point of injury from here down. So it doesn't matter how hard I work, it's, you know, nothing's ever going to change and that's unfortunately just the yeah. way it is. It's something that we find quite annoying because I think there's this perception, like within the general public who don't really know about spinal cord injuries, they see these articles on the news and they just think anybody who's paralysed has the potential to do this if they work really hard, um, but that's not how it works. If someone's spinal cord is severed, it doesn't matter how hard they try, they're not going to get anything back, not without a cure or some... Um, like technology or something that's gonna gonna do that but they're not gonna just get the signals back over this gap. Um, so the closest that we can get to walking with current technology is in an exoskeleton but the with the current technology they're not really practical for a mobility point of view you know they're never gonna give me more mobility than I currently have in my wheelchair they can't do like uneven ground and stairs mm. but they are quite good from a therapeutical point of view you know as a I guess a substitute for like using a standing frame, for example. Um, so I'd definitely be interested in trying it from that point of view. Um, and then hopefully as the years go by, the technology will get a lot better and they will get quite good at being used for a mobility standpoint as well. So 
if that happens, then yeah, hundred percent, I'd be up for trying that as well. Right. So I think that we've answered quite a lot of questions now, and the length of this video is getting on quite a bit. So that's going to be it for this video. However, we will save the rest of the questions that we haven't answered yet for a future video, and we'll do another Q and A at some point. So if you've got any more questions that you would like us to answer in another Q and A video, then let us know, and we will do them when we do the next Q and A video. Yeah, we've really enjoyed answering your questions. So yeah, please leave more. Um, thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye. Bye.